to your home. Journey to Adventure, television's longest running travel show, with your host and guide, Gunther Less. Today we are going to the largest and most populous of the Scandinavian countries. Hudson Strode called it the model of the world. A country where one fifth of the people left for America during the great emigration wave. And where I have never met a native who did not have at least one relative in the United States. Of course, I'm speaking of Sweden. And to escort us through her country, we have none other than a former Miss Sweden and Miss Universe, Yvonne Reding, and together we will discover Sweden. When we think of Sweden, the visions that come to mind are smorgasbord, Swedish automobiles, Ingrid Bergman, Greta Garbo, beautiful women and handsome men, so not necessarily in that order. But my special guest today, Yvonne Rüding, who definitely fits into one of these categories, because she is a former Miss Sweden and went on to win the crown of Miss Universe. She is going to show us that there is indeed much more to discover about Sweden. <laughs> Yvonne, if you would have to describe Sweden in one sentence, what would you say? Oh, home. <laughs> Beautiful country, clean air, fresh air, clean everywhere, deep woods, uh, lots of lakes, um, friendly people. You are so right. <laughs> and still, I always have the feeling when I'm in Sweden, that the Swedes are a little bit more reserved than the rest of the Scandinavians. Well, maybe you're right. We, we not might, everybody. But I'm, I'm a little different. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm not a typical Swede. I'm not that reserved. But uh, a lot of people in Sweden are reserved. They're a little, you know, but uh, not unfriendly. You know, Yvonne, every time I go to Stockholm, uh -huh. I love to take your subway, and I tell you why, I think it's the biggest art gallery in the world. Oh, well, it sure is. They have, a, they change every now and then. They don't have it all over the Tunnelbana, as we call it, Tunnelbana. Yes. And um, they change it every now and then. Uh, they have it in different stations, and um, they're just uh, a lot of famous Swedish artists new people and you know people that have been in the business a long time too it's very exciting and nobody steals anything and nobody steals <laughs> anything now how no. would you say in sweden swedish let's be on our way Come nu sticker me. let's go to <laughs> sweden right now today sweden is neither warlike nor downtrodden this country which enjoys one of the highest standards of living in the world declared neutrality in the latter part of the 19th century and has not been involved in a war since 1814. Powers of government are held by an elected parliament and the ceremonial figureheads are King Carl XVI, Gustav and Queen Sylvia. The Swedish royal couple is revered both at home and abroad and represent with grace and dignity the image of modern Sweden. The royal family has a summer residence on Erlen at Suliden, where the grounds are open to the public and visitors are welcome. At other times, the royal residence is at Drottenholme Palace on the outskirts of Stockholm. Visitors may tour the palace as well as the gardens and grounds. The most popular way to arrive is by boats, which depart on a regular basis from Town Hall and offer picturesque views of the western part of the city, a trip which takes one hour. For those with a penchant for palaces, Sweden does have its castles. In Skåne alone, there are over 200 of them. The well-preserved 16th century castle of Torup, just outside Malmö, was built as a fortress when the land belonged to Denmark. Buja Kloster, originally a nunnery, traces its roots to the year 1080. Poised on a spit of land that separates two lakes, today, Buja Kloster and Count Tud Bonde play host to visitors from all over the world. Jotiborg Harbor is guarded by the 17th century Elfsborg Fortress, 
which later became a prison. Currently, offshore diving expeditions bring up remains from the East Indian ship Jotaburg, which sank with a valuable cargo in 1745. On the southeast coast of Sweden is the impressive castle of Kalmar. The oldest part of this magnificent structure dates to the 12th century, and it is easy to see why it played such an important role in the history of the country. Kalmar itself is one of the oldest cities in Sweden, and because of its location, was once one of the most important. It is often said that whoever controlled Kalmar controlled sea traffic along the coast to Stockholm. From Ice Age to Iron Age to the Glass Age, between the cities of Kalmar and Vesho is the Kingdom of Crystal, a crown jewel known as the Glass District of Sweden where masterpieces are designed and then created through the skills of master craftsmen, artists who breathe life into red-hot molten glass. Costa Boda and Orefors are the most famous of 16 glass works in the region, each with its own style, tradition, and personality, and still created just as it was decades ago. Yes, when these folks show you their etchings, they're serious about it. Crystal clear beauty, etched to lasting perfection and molded by skilled glass blowers from little more than a molten glow. In summer, there's another glow in Sweden. In the north, the midnight sun hangs low in the sky, nestled over treetops with amber serenity. A stillness where you can actually witness the birth of a new day as dawn moves across the horizon. summer means sunshine. So a Swedish summer means days in the sun by the water. Even in the cities where everyone turns to the light and everyone turns lighthearted. Yes, the Swedes have mastered daylight savings to perfection. They've seen the light. Let the sun brighten the day and everyone savors the warmth of its golden rays. It is something of a Swedish phenomenon. When time doesn't allow a trip to the beach, Stockholmers head for the King's Garden in the heart of the city, while citizens of Jotaburg enjoy the atmosphere along the avenue. The summer celebration reaches its peak in June. Throughout Sweden, it is a time for midsummer festivals, a time when children wear flowers in their hair, when hometown bands parade through the streets, when people gather to enjoy traditional festivities and eagerly share in decorating and raising the maypole. Folk dancing is not limited to midsummer. It can happen anywhere, anytime, such as the old square of Malma. Or perhaps you can find a lively and colorful dance at Skansen in Stockholm. In Stockholm, you can cruise in the twilight of a breathtaking city with Dixieland music setting the scene. Care to dance? Then dance your cares away in the glorious archipelago. For indoor jazz, try stomping in Stockholm's Gamla Stan.
But if you don't like all that jazz, there's still a smorgasbord of nightlife to enjoy. And now back to lovely Yvonne. <laughs> Yvonne, are you a good cook? Uh, oh, I love to cook. I really do. So tell us all about smorgasbord. How you start and what you eat in the middle and how you finish your meal up. Okay. Well, for it's a little different. When the Americans present a smorgasbord, they have everything on the table at the same time. It's the cold, the herring, the warm food, you know, meatballs, yes. and the dessert also. <laughs> we don't do it that way. We start with the herring and boiled potato, uh, chives. That's how it always starts. It's her pickled herring and pickled boiled, herring, po and boiled, boiled potatoes. potatoes. That's how it starts out. Sour cream, chives, maybe a little egg with, with some uh, a caviar, um, you know, a little, little salad maybe. Just cold food. Mm -hmm. um, if you wish, you could have a little herring snaps yes. at that time. Um, and then we go over and we eat um, uh, the warm food, Some which meat is uh, meatballs, mm -hmm. um, so, uh, some type of uh, sausages. Um, Johnson's Temptation. Have you ever tried that? Yes, I yes, you like it. I love it. Because <laughs> the Americans can be a little like that. They don't. They don't like the anchovies yeah. that's in it. Um, uh, maybe omelette. Mm hmm. Um, hmm. Then, all the warm food. Oh, I'm getting so hungry and now. Then come all the desserts. <laughs> and then dessert, which could be apple pie with the um, cheeses. Well. Cheese also, um, yeah, you're right, yeah. some cheese. You know, I never see people drinking wine with smorgasbord. If they drink alcohol, it's either, as you say, some schnapps or yeah. aqua no, we never or beer, but never mind. And lots of people just drink water. Mm -hmm. Yes, isn't that strange? Yeah. I never thought it by my, myself until you <laughs> said it now, but that's really right. And you cannot get any liquor at all before noon in, in a Swedish restaurant. Yeah, that's right, Ginter. Uh, and you can also not buy any liquor on Saturdays and Sundays. A quick question. Everybody asks me about the sauna, mm -hmm. if it's mixed. Now you tell <laughs> us about it. It's part of life in Sweden. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, talk about being reserved. The Americans <laughs> are reserved in that, in that way. Um, yeah, we, it's mixed. I, I, have been, I have been taking sauna with my parents and my brother and everybody. So let's go and see it. Let's go back to Sweden right now. The modern Swede loves music, and exercise too. In summer, many parks in Stockholm and Göteborg feature programs that are free for anyone to enjoy throughout the week. The chance to get frisky and sweaty. All three major cities have amusement centers, but Liseberg in Göteborg ranks as Sweden's largest tourist attraction. This magnificent park features rides, shows, landscaping, and technology to rival the best theme parks in the world. Speaking of amusements, can this be Sweden? Or this? Well, it is. The Kolmården Safari Park and Zoo is one of the best. Just a couple of hours southwest of Stockholm, the park features animals and wildlife presented in a natural environment. There are even areas provided for meeting the animals up close and personal, if you like. And the dolphin show is perhaps the finest in the world. The Equestrian Breeding Foundation outside Malmö is heaven for horse lovers. The royal stud at Flyinga began in 1661, and today serves as a breeding establishment for thoroughbreds, including the unique Swedish warm blood. If jumping is not to your liking, Malmö has other places for just horsing around. For the black sheep of your travels, just look around. There are animals everywhere in any kind of setting. Street markets abound throughout Europe, and Stockholm and Malmö are living examples. Wonderful squares where fresh produce and flowers are bought and sold right out in the open. Always a gathering spot, always full of activity. Equally popular is the fish church in Jotaburg. Don't be surprised to discover it isn't a church at all, even if it looks like one. Fish vendors are on hand every day to offer their catches fresh from the sea. 
in Grevestad, a few hours north, but still on the west coast. Choose the fish you desire, and if you're hungry enough, they'll cook it right on the spot. Be it the streets of Gamlestad in Stockholm, the shopping district of Malmö, or the famed avenue of Göteborg with its many boutiques, shopping in Sweden is always a popular pastime. Wherever you shop, look for the tax-free sign, which guarantees visitors a cash refund of the value-added tax upon leaving the country. It can mean tremendous savings, and the refund is immediate. Swedish tax-free is honored at NK, which is the largest department store in the country. NK can be found in all three major cities and promises anything and everything under the Swedish sun. From the famed Swedish crystal to magnificent Scandinavian furs, NK has floors filled with all the treasures a veteran shopper could want. It took 58,000 men 22 years to complete the Yurta Canal back in 1832. Its purpose, to link the west coast of Sweden, Göteborg and Lake Vänern, with the east coast, Stockholm and the Baltic Sea. Once the fastest way across country, today it is probably the slowest, taking four days to complete the journey. Nevertheless, as someone once put it, the Yurta Canal is one very impressive ditch. Sweden is boats, everywhere, every type. Take a canal cruise around the old city of Malmö through colorful parks and acres of flowers. East coast or west, Tannum or Stockholm, Swedes love their archipelagos, those wonderful islands of isolation where life takes on a different perspective. When there's a sale going on in Sweden, they aren't talking about shopping. Adventurous travelers may seek out the rivers of Kiruna in the north and journey through the wilderness of the land of the midnight sun. But be forewarned, the surroundings can change rather rapidly. <laughs> to best get the flavor of the country and a true taste of Sweden, the only answer is to experience the food. And they really know how to dish it out. From lively outdoor cafes, to elegant charm behind the remains of the original walls of Stockholm and the Victory Hotel, to the intimacy of underground taverns and vaults, such as five small houses in Gamlestad, all serving Swedish delicacies that will make your taste buds come alive. For something truly unique, dine like a Nobel Prize winner at the Town Hall Restaurant. Notification must be made in advance, but any Nobel menu dating back to 1935 can be prepared. At Gritetan, Sweden's foremost wine connoisseur, Carl Jan Granqvist, serves sumptuous meals at his inn, including the traditional Swedish smorgasbord. Sweden is another world. A world of variety. A world of diversity. A world of difference. In short, Sweden is out of this world, where adventure lies beyond every turn where civilization is adapted to nature and blends into that special rhythm that must be experienced to be understood. Here is a land where you can sail into tomorrow, where you can fly to the top of the world, where you are more likely to happen upon a herd of reindeer or see animals in the wild than to see the people who live among them. A place surrounded by the perpetual sounds of nature, yet a place alive with the wonders of the 20th century. The best of the old blended with the best of the new. Sweden is fantastic. Sweden is a natural. To a Swede, the best thing about the country is its natural environment. To a traveler, the nature of the land is secondary. More important is the nature of the people. And the people are one of Sweden's greatest natural resources. Yes, Sweden does have its own special rhythm. That sense of place, that feeling of inner peace. A quiet perspective that characterizes the Swedish philosophy. A place of discovery. All it takes is one little turn off the main road. You see, it's not so bad if you lose yourself in Sweden. Who knows, you may just happen to find yourself as well.
Yes, Sweden truly is a Scandinavian surprise. Yvonne, you're also a famous soccer player. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. It was good having oh, you. Oh, thank you. Sweden, a country with space, freedom, is the highest standard of living. Sweden has always been one of my favorite countries. There you receive such a cordial welcome that you want to return again and again. And I especially enjoy the personal warmth of the people. For colorful free literature, please send your letters and postcards to Sweden. Kif Journey to Adventure, Post Office Box 300, Times Square Station, New York, New York, 10108. I'm your host, Gunther Les, hoping that you have discovered some of Sweden today and inviting you to join me on my next visit and my next Journey to Adventure. <laughs>